2022 was a pretty interesting year in the fact that it was the year that I started reading all these different books and kind of making videos on them and things like that. And I've basically read every single thing on this shelf. Now this doesn't really correspond with the amount of videos that I've done because they just take so long. But uh, something I've been thinking about doing lately is just kind of showing you some of the things that I found to be extraordinary. Maybe some of the things that I thought were maybe just a little too long for me personally to do a video on, at least not till a little later, when I kind of really figured things out, which by the way, I have two videos coming out. They are Swamp Thing and Batman Holy terror but both of those videos raw footage is about two hours long so it's going to be a little while until those are out so i thought in the meantime we'd come here and hang out and we'd just kind of talk about some of the great reads that i've got now for this time i've picked out about 11 or maybe 10 different books that i thought were absolutely extraordinary and i just kind of want to tell you guys a little about them and hopefully if any of these sound good to you you will go ahead and pick them up now for the first one that i want to talk about is actually a recommendation by one of you by i believe jerry and I gotta say, thank you so much. You've really opened my eyes to how awesome Constantine books are, especially the ones by like Warren Ellis, Garth Ennis, Brian Azzarello, which is actually the man who did Batman the Damned, which at the time, that was only like the fifth book that I had ever read, so I, I just had no idea. But my lord, out of all the ones that I've liked the best, it has to be Constantine Hellblazer, Dangerous Habits. Now this actually has Constantine dealing with his own fatal death. And the thing that I like the most about this book is basically Constantine is just trying to come to terms with this. It's mostly about him realizing that he's not going to die by the hands of a demon. Hell is not going to swallow him whole. He's just merely going to die from lung cancer. All the silk cut cigarettes that he smoked out through his career, the 20 or 30 so a day, has finally caught up with him and one day he just kind of starts puking up a bunch of blood and inevitably just a piece of his own self and he's absolutely freaked out and throughout this entire story is really just a very beautiful tragic situation we just kind of see Constantine grasping to life through every through every means that he can he goes to all these different magicians he actually goes to one of his other friends who he believes can possibly help him with this situation and uh, when he gets there he finds out that his friend is also having the same problem but rather in his liver his liver is failing and uh, there's just some really beautiful scenes of them just kind of drinking his buddy knows that he's going to die he's basically drank himself down the drain and he just wants to have one last night with a good friend just laughing it up and by the end of it, we basically get to see how Constantine is made immortal by selling his soul to three different demons. And this is a story that I just really hope we can cover in a later video, as it's one that really needs to be done justice on just how good the writing is. But outside of this, I've read a bunch of different Constantine stuff from around that same era, such as uh, Hard Time, where Constantine goes to prison, Good Intentions. And the one thing I gotta say is these books are hardcore, all right? There is no fucking around in Constantine. These are gut-wrenching books. Some of the things that I've seen in these, especially in Good Intentions or with Hard time it is just almost a little too much all right it's nothing that i ever would have expected as if you watch any like the dc animated movies um you will never see the light of this version of constantine and i hope with the new keanu reeves constantine movie we uh maybe get to see some of that as well these are incredibly grim and dark but with the writers of brian azzarello and garth ennis and things like that these people know how to write a real person they know how to spin a story that will just keep you wrenched in at all times so with my first recommendation I would highly, highly suggest you start reading some of these older Constantine books, especially Dangerous Habits. Now, for my second awesome read, I think this one kind of requires a little bit of legwork before we get to it, as this is Clementine. It's a story that is based in the Walking Dead universe. In order to fully understand this, at least the moments behind it, I think you could, for the most part, get through this without too many questions, but if you play the Walking Dead Telltale games, there is four different seasons, each game racking up about five to maybe ten hours apiece. It will paint a very complete picture. Now this is kind of a book that I was a little surprised when I looked up the reviews on this as a lot of people didn't really care for this. They thought that Clementine made a little too many changes but it's one that I really enjoyed. I didn't think it was that far off from the actual Clementine herself and if you've played the games the biggest issue with people is that she is no longer as hard as she used to be. She used to be a take no shit type of person. She used to just bust heads and ask questions later and with this one we see a very much more depressed Clementine and I really don't see 
why this wouldn't be the case. Anybody that Clementine has ever loved has basically died around her, or she herself has had to put down before they become walkers. All these different situations of just absolutely terrifying, utterly sad situations, and especially in the first season of The Walking Dead Telltale Games, where she has to pretty much put down her guardian, or you can choose not to and let him become a zombie. But Clementine overall, I thought was a very heart-touching book, as well as a lot of fun. It just kind of starts off with Clementine after the events of Season 4 of The Walking Dead Telltale Games, and I'm gonna try not to say that too much. And eventually, she comes across this Amish community, and I thought that was kind of awesome. These people are just stuck to themselves, they have held off Rumspringer, but this is the year that'll come back, and she meets a young boy named Amos who is going to take this journey. He's heard about a group of people that are kind of building a new civilization up in the mountains where it is extremely cold and the walkers basically freeze solid before they're ever able to actually hurt anybody. And while Clementine does not want to go here, she doesn't really trust anybody anymore, she eventually comes around to really liking this kid and they head up to the top of this mountain and the events that unfold are also very tragic but also very neat. You get to see Clementine just kind of meeting all these different people as they are trying not to freeze to death on top of this mountain as it turns out there's only like two people that are actually up there. And there's just not a whole lot more that I can really say about this but if you're into The Walking Dead or if you're just kind of into weird zombie stories I really really recommend Clementine. And honestly me personally I cannot wait for book two to come out this year. Now for my third recommendation this is one that took me a while to actually finally pick up but when I did I was absolutely a Astounded. The artwork here by Liam Sharp is absolutely perfect. It's nothing that I've really ever seen in a comic book, even though I'm sure there is some other ones with great art like this. And the only one that I can think of right now is maybe The Department of Truth, which is also an absolutely fantastic thing, but it won't be concluded in this video. And this is Batman Reptilian, written by Garth Ennis, the man who has written so many different Constantine books, as well as Preacher and The Boys, which most everybody in the planet knows about by this time. And what is so great about this is that you're going to get a version of Batman that we've never really seen before, as it's not quite like a Frank Miller version where he's kind of a bratty rich kid who can't seem to come to terms with the death of his own parents, and it's not really a Capullo-esque Batman where he's kind of a noble knight of the city. This is a Batman that absolutely does not fuck around when trying to solve his mystery, alright? He will break your spine, and he will keep you under his wrath. He actually takes this person under his wing, and he essentially tells them, you know, these villains, they'll kill you alright, but with me, I'll, I'll never let you die. I'll just keep coming back and back until I get what I want. So you might as well just work with me. And the best thing about this is the story. It's so very intriguing. I almost figured it'd be something just about Killer Croc, maybe his origin story or something like that as I have yet to come across an origin story for him. But what it really is, is about the type of lizard that Killer Croc is. Now Killer Croc is a man, he is also a reptile, but he is also a hermaphrodite. And in this sense, he can kind of impregnate himself and he kind of goes into this primitive state and he starts releasing all these different pheromones in the air and when all the super villains come into Gotham City to have a meeting with each other to essentially figure out how they're finally gonna murder the goddamn Batman for once and all he basically kind of tags all these people unknowingly with a pheromone and when he gives birth to this weird baby and when I say baby I don't mean a tiny little thing I mean like a weird Godzilla-esque demonic creature from hell something with like six some eyes and just looks amazing when when you finally get to that part, is this weird reptilian child just goes around to all these different supervillains who were kind of tagged with a pheromone, and he just starts slaughtering these people. We're seeing guts pulled, we're seeing eyes pulled out of sockets, we're seeing just spines and bones cracked, and while he never actually makes the kill blow by just, you know, ending their lives, he is essentially kind of testing their blood as when they are tagged with a pheromone, this is essentially a way for him to find his mama. And this story was so absolutely fantastic, like I said, it's a version of Batman that I've never seen and when I seen that Garth Ennis writ a Batman story I knew that I absolutely had to have it and figure out what exactly is going on here and with the art being as great as it is as I'm sure you'll see through a couple of these different clips it is something that I absolutely recommend it is something that if you are a fan of Batman I think you definitely need to read if not just to have this amazing artwork on your shelf so yes Batman Reptilian an absolutely awesome story and something I highly highly recommend.
Now, for my fourth recommendation, I would have to say DC vs. Vampires. Now, I've read a couple of these different books where it kind of involves every single character in the DC universe, and while they're usually incredibly fun, I think they kind of miss out on a lot of character development as there's just so much going on that we don't really get to have a heart of heart with a lot of these people. But this one was, like I said, really fun. We're dealing with this vampire hierarchy that is trying to take over the world by turning all the superheroes and supervillains into vampires. And how they do this is very strategic. They are able to kind of conceal this, and one by one, we're seeing heroes and villains alike be turned to the other side. And I think one of the greatest moments in this is when the Green Lantern is trying to convince these vampires that he wants to convert his best friend, Barry Allen, the Flash, into the ranks of their Dark Majesty. And they basically tell him no, as the Flash's metabolism would be far too much for the world to handle, that there would be no blood left in the world, as the Flash wouldn't be able to keep up with his own hunger, and he would literally be able to siphon the planet's blood supply in a mere couple of months, just ending humanity as we know it. And I thought that was absolutely amazing. Now, one other thing that I liked about this is Bruce Wayne, and how paranoid he is, and how absolutely prepared he is. It almost pisses off all everybody else because he has all these, these kill plans, these ways to stop people just in case these heroes or villains, you know, kind of take a turn. Like if Superman went all uh, injustice on everybody and took over the planet. Well, the coolest thing that he does in this is he invites the entire Bat family over. And he has Alfred make some tea out of holy water, and he brings them all into this nice little sunroom. The sun's shining, and while he doesn't let anybody know, he has everybody drink this tea. Now, the funniest thing about it is Damian Wayne just kind of says, I, I don't drink tea. And Bruce Wayne has uh, essentially premeditated this and has Alfred make some hot cocoa out of the holy water and literally uh, Damien drinks it and it turns out that none of them are vampires but just the ultimate planning ahead for any situation possible I thought was incredibly great. So this is another one that I cannot wait for the second volume. It should be coming out sometime this year, and it is also something that I highly recommend. If you like DC at all, it basically involves every single character, and uh, it's just a lot, a lot of fun. And for the fifth recommendation, this one is called God Country, and the artwork, and I think maybe the story, is actually done by a man named Wordy. This is a man who did all the artwork for Uptumnal. I have a video on that one if you'd like to go and watch that. It's probably not my best, but it is one that I did really enjoy. And it's a very unique story. It's kind of about this southern family. One character's dad is kind of falling to Alzheimer's, losing his mind, and while it is very sad, out of nowhere this giant space demon comes down and crashes, when suddenly this giant mystical sword also comes down and implants itself in the hand of this kid's dad, and essentially cures this man, as long as he's holding it. And it's just kind of a story about this old grandpa just trying to defend his family from all these different people, as this giant space age colony is kind of coming after them as they want this sword. It's actually the embodiment of every battle in the universe going on simultaneously. Uh, this is kind of a one-shot, so you can get the whole thing in one book and just have yourself a nice read. It'll probably take about an hour and a half or an hour to read it. And it's a very heart-touching story, as well as very funny. And I kind of always enjoy the mixing of fantasy with um, sci-fi, and I think it's definitely, definitely something that you should read, and especially support Wordy, because his artwork is absolutely fantastic, and he seems to always be tied to to really amazing storytelling. And for my sixth recommendation, I would have to say Infidel. This is also a story with a comic book artist that we've come across. This is another person who helped make Autumnal, which seems to be very popular in this video, but it's really good. And it actually has to deal with a lot of xenophobia, a story about just people being ridiculous about Muslim people moving into their building. And when a terrifying event happens and a bomb does go off from a very deranged man, it leads everybody to essentially blame the Muslim family upstairs. And with all this going on, the man who actually set off the bomb, this kind of all leads to his soul kind of haunting this whole hotel complex. And while it's not something that I could exactly explain super well, it really was an awesome story. I think the artwork in this is also very fantastic. The character writings is also very good. They deal with this man who um, used to write all these different satanic books, who actually lived in the same apartment as the man who did the bombing uh, previously, before that man ever moved in. And he kind of had all these different symbols going on. And when they figure this out, they realize that this is how the soul is being tied to the building. But overall, I think if you love horror books with a, a little bit of a message in them, this is definitely a very good read. I think Infidel does a very good job at just kind of explaining why people are afraid of stupid things for stupid reasons. And yes, Infidel. I'm, I think I just botched that one, alright? Hopefully I explained the rest very well, but I very, I, I do, 
I do think you should read this. It is very good. Now for my seventh recommendation, it is called Saga, and if you haven't read this, I think it is definitely something you need to. This is probably one of the most funnest reads that I've had in a long time, as it's a very sci-fi fantasy mix. It kind of deals with this family who has just had a baby. Um, one is from one planet where they're kind of fairy type people, and the other one are these horned people who kind of cast spells, and basically their two cultures have been colliding for many, many decades. And uh, when they have a baby together, the entire galaxy is kind of after them. They think they've created this abomination. And uh, this is a very dirty book. It has a very good story, but there is a lot of sex, a lot of violence. And uh, we also come across these other weird creatures with these TV heads. And sometimes when they're knocked out, you'll just kind of, you'll blatantly see a dick in the screen, all right? It's very interesting like that. There's a lot of twists and turns. It's a very dirty book, like I said. But overall, it is extremely fun. I could definitely see this being made into like a Netflix original or something like that is it's just kind of out of this world in another distant galaxy and I think something that is very attention grabbing and it's actually a very long series each one of these books is about eight to ten dollars and I think it's incredibly affordable and the story inside is absolutely fantastic and it's just something very unique to the sci-fi fantasy genre and a definite must read in your collection that's the great thing about these graphic novels is we don't only have to read superhero comic books all right there's so many different kind of indie stories and one-off shoots and these are usually the ones that I enjoy the most. Now speaking of superheroes and things of the sort of course I would have to include another Batman comic book. This is Batman vs. Bigby, A Wolf in Gotham. Now if you know anything about the Fable series or the actual another Telltale game series called The Wolf Among Us, it is a very awesome character. It's this detective they basically all come to the our reality and they have to kind of purchase this glamour. Alright, this actually deals with a bunch of different fables like the three pigs that blew the house down, Cinderella, Snow White, the Log Man, all these different characters that we come to know as children in a very gritty and dirty city. And it's something incredibly unique. And when they all eventually come to Gotham, we actually get to see Bruce Wayne and Big B himself kind of team up in order to stop the bookworm. A man who is kind of acquiring all these different spell books. One actually came through a different dimension, Big B's dimension. And what this book holds is some of the top 10 best spells in the entire universe. And something that he could use to basically dominate the entire planet. And the thing I liked most about this book is not only is the story very good, as we actually get to see how Batman trains all these different Robins. He's actually got this facility where Robins are training different Robins. But with Batman vs. Bigby, the artwork in this is also incredibly good. We get to see Batman at some of his best points with some of his coolest gadgets. And the artwork is very, very crisp, very vivid. I love all the coloring. I think it is a great mix of kind of fabulistic stories as well as a modern world story. Uh, there's no Joker in here. There's no like Batman villains that you would guess that you would see. We get to see some of the people from Fable kind of working with Jim Gordon. And when I seen this, I also knew that I absolutely had to have it. There's some insane Batman crossovers, and I think this is definitely one of them that you need to have. Now, for the ninth recommendation, this is kind of a deep dive, and if you're a Stephen King fan, I think you're really, really gonna appreciate this. There's actually four of these different books, one for each of the different characters in the Dark Tower series, one of my all-time favorite book series ever. I just remember when I used to be a cleaner in Grand Rapids, just kind of cleaning buildings in the nighttime with my headphones in, and just listening to this amazing story. And where this one actually does is kind of go through Eddie Dean's childhood. Now, I know, like I said, this is a bit of a deep dive, so if you don't know anything about The Dark Tower, this may be kind of hard to follow, but it is an amazing story, all right? We get to see this in book two of The Dark Tower series, and this one just kind of emboldens that. We get to see Eddie basically grow up from two years old all the way to an adult until the gunslinger took him into that other plane, that other existence. And I think the interactions between him and his older brother, Henry, the great sage and junkie, was a really awesome story. And while they do kind of change a few different things, I thought overall it was very well done. The artwork in this kind of threw me off. It's a little more anime-esque, I would say. It does a little bit more of a step than like a DC animation would go, which I sometimes think is very lackluster compared to their actual comic book and graphic novel counterparts. But if you are a fan of the Dark Tower series, Stephen King's Dark Tower, The Drawing of the Three, The Prisoner, and one of the longest titled graphic novels that I've ever had, this does an absolutely fantastic job at tying in the universe. We get to see the haunted house that Jake has plummeted through. We get to see the kind of restaurant where the cannibals live at the end of the Dark Tower series. And it is very enjoyable and incredibly cheap for this hardcover. I think it was a mere $10 of the sort. And with these hardcovers, we always 
get uh, a nice book sleeve and usually they do have something on the inside but uh, apparently not this one but yes yeah, Stephen King's The Dark Tower The Drawing of the Three The Prisoner <laughs> is very good and I highly recommend that. Now for my final recommendation, if you are a fan of Indiana Jones, if you are a fan of any kind of sci-fi horror type of situation, this is an absolute must read. And this book has a few parts in it that are very hard to stomach, some things that I never thought I'd see, but overall it is an amazing story. And this is called Nameless. And this is another one that I'm really hoping to do a video on later in the future, as this one is very complex. It's one that I had to read a couple times just to kind of figure out what the hell is actually going on here. But we have this very Indiana Jones-esque person, except he finds all this uh, paranormal phenomena, and eventually he is taken by this kind of shadow organization of the government and forced to go off to this asteroid out in space. Now what this asteroid actually is, is kind of the embodiment God himself coming for the Earth. And when I say God, it's not necessarily an up in the clouds type of thing. It is more of a dead space-esque marker, something that is going to change people into something else, into these monsters that just rip and tear, and their worst emotions and products come out of their own bodies, and they just start destroying the entire planet. But by the end of this, you kind of figure out that it's not quite what's going on. The story is absolutely insane. It's got some scenes in it that are literally, utterly horrifying. Uh, a few times when I was reading it, my girlfriend actually picked this one out, and I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it wasn't her fault, but I was like, holy shit, this is definitely a very good one, and I wish I could explain it a little better but all I can say is that Nameless is an absolutely amazing sci-fi horror story in something that I very highly recommend so everybody there is 10 stories that you could go out and read um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you actually found a couple good things to pick up uh, this is kind of in place for my weekly Friday video or whenever I am able to post these things as um like I said I got a Swamp Thing art going on one from Alan Moore as well as the 1990s Batman Holy Terror which is a very interesting take on Batman and those videos came out to be extremely long so I'm gonna need a little bit of extra time to edit those things and uh, hopefully you guys are patient but it just is what it is these videos take an absolutely ton of amount of time to do basically when I was like pumping out two videos after that Crusader video popped off because I felt like I had to absolutely hammer home my channel while I had all these different people uh, that was all I was doing during the week and uh, it's kind of hard to find time to dedicate three to four hours a day just to get one video out so hopefully Hopefully you guys are understanding. I don't want to explain myself too much as I'm sure you guys don't care or whatever, but just know that those are coming and they are probably going to be hour long videos and that's something I'm pretty excited about and it's kind of my first leap into trying to do these bigger stories, all right? I've been sticking to the little ones because I like to be very descriptive and kind of go through the entire book. And what I have realized is that makes for a lot of work for myself. <laughs> but it's fun, and I really enjoy the end product, and you guys seem to as well. So anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found something good to read. Leave me some down in the comments, or just talk to me or whatever. That would be absolutely fantastic. But uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic weekend. And I can't wait to see you on the next video of From the Heart, where we, uh, like I said, pour words directly out of my brain and put them on the internet for anybody who will watch. But yes, I will see you all on the next episode. Goodbye. All right. See ya.